Hello and welcome. I'm Robert McDermott. I'm the President Emeritus of the California Institute of Integral Studies and I would like to share with you a brief history of the Institute or the University really and with a special emphasis on the spiritual mission. What is spiritual about this institution or this university, this community? Does it have some depth or purpose that we might call spiritual or not? It's one of the things we in this uh, community are aware of, that it's not so clear always what is or isn't spiritual, and there's lots of disagreements about it. So the Institute started, well, it has several beginnings, actually. It started with Sri Aurobindo, the great Indian spiritual teacher, uh, who died in 1950, and who sent a young professor from Calcutta to, uh, to America to join a group of people who were starting an academy, the, uh, the American Academy of Asian Studies, which was here in San Francisco, just in time for the very beginning of the San Francisco Renaissance with uh, Allen Ginsberg and uh, Jack Kerouac and Lawrence Ferlinghetti and etc. Five people and the actual founder was a businessman, Louis Gainsborough, who imported and exported nuts and fruits to Asia and he was not impressed by the knowledge of Asia among his business colleagues. So he started the school. Very unlikely prospect and he put in a small fortune and a lot of work and he wasn't much appreciated for his efforts and the whole thing came apart in about five or six years. But the person who came to join them, Dr. Haridas Choudhury, stayed and continued to teach at a, a, in a beautiful building on Fulton and Third, which is still there, celebrating its 61st anniversary recently. And he and his wife, Bina, then became the center of this teaching meditation. And one of his students was two students, Michael Murphy and Dick Price, who uh, then founded Esalen in 1962. Unfortunately, Haridas died of a heart attack at his desk in 1975. In 1983, in a certain sense, the school got another jump, or maybe its second jump, after the founding. And that was when they moved to uh, Ashbury Street, interestingly, across the, across the street from the Grateful Dead House. I was appointed president in 1990, and, but Lawrence Rockefeller gave us $5 million dollars which enabled us to make many, many improvements. In fact, in the course of the next 10, 13 years, he gave us $13 million, which really lifted us up. Um, in 2000, uh, <clears throat> we appointed a new president, Joe Sobiando, who had had a 25-year career in education, in higher education, and he then appointed, soon after, Judy Wexler. In this, in this uh, university, there isn't an agreement about what spiritual is or how this institute's history is spiritual, but there should be, and I think mostly there is an interest in that question. All right. And then, what are the varieties of spiritual? So it was founded by Haridas Choudhury, who came from this Indian spiritual lineage, uh, based very heavily on the Bhagavad Gita and those yogas of knowledge, action, and love, all of which he really taught and embodied quite wonderfully. Uh, another way to think about it, since our school is also heavily Buddhist, many people regard the Dalai Lama as their sort of as the foremost spiritual teacher of our time. Uh, we could say, well, we could say we're based on the three jewels of Buddhism, which is a teacher, and many people here have teachers. And then the second jewel is the teaching and the practice, and so lots of people here have practices, and some classes begin with the meditation, or they make sure that they include texts that have a, a sort of a, a pointing to some deeper dimension. And then the third jewel is quite important for this little topic, and that is the Sangha, the community. So this is a, you could say, from a secular point of view, this is a university that's accredited and uh, students pay tuition, faculty get paid, administration gets paid, lots of people work here, um, and it's just like, in some sense, like lots of other institutions. But you could also say that because it's trying to realize these, uh, these yogas, or 
you could say, because it is not just a university, but a kind of a sangha. So this is a niche school. It's a special school with a special mission. And people who should come here are people who have this affinity. You have a, a spiritual gene. You have an opening. You have a, a, a dimension of your life and of your career that you want to activate. And you should want to join with other people who are here, who in they might be studying psychology or anthropology or all kinds of diverse fields, uh, but all with some sense that you're looking for a deeper dimension, a transformative uh, element, something that's not so visible but might actually be more real, or at least very real and deep and powerful if you could access it. And maybe you already have and you want to join with others who also have done that. So try to keep in mind this idea of thinking, spiritual thinking, spiritual action, you know, not being concerned about what's in it for you, but what's in it for sort of for the world. And uh, and then there's a kind of a devotion, it's called bhakti or love or service in a way that has your heart involved. And, and that's what this university, as I think about it, school has, is, its mission is, uh, it's a, it's a university of higher education and research uh, committed to, uh, it's very important, uh, intellect, wisdom, and spirit in service of uh, individuals, communities, and earth. And its second commitment of seven is it joins the spiritual and the intellectual or the spiritual and the academic. Thank you for listening.